Um, turn with me to Proverbs 31 as we discuss, or study, rather, um, biblical womanhood. I hope that some of you, my daughter included, um, some of you, I love JC, but she's just, she's difficult. She's extra. That's what makes her so special. Um, if her boyfriend were here, they would, she would say yes, amen, amen, and amen. <laughs> oh, goodness. You know, there, most of you know, a lot of what I say is, is pretty obvious if, if, um, if you pay attention around you, but there is a, there is a narrative being pushed um, in our country that um, gender is a social construct. It, um, it, therefore, since it's a, a social construct, womanhood is determined by social factors, it's determined by uh, experiences, it's determined by expectations, it's, exter- it's determined by uh, feelings, et cetera, et cetera, which basically means that everybody is to make their own determination, have their own definition of what it means to be a woman. That goes with men, that goes with um, basically everything. Um, But the problem is, (laughs) if it's not already obvious, the problem is that many of the people who are who are pushing that narrative um, is causing that lie to be accepted as truth uh, in our society, it's even around the world, but um, but a large portion of that, is, they think truth is relative, right? So they'll believe uh, anything that the the enemy pushes down their throat because truth is relative. It's not it's not uh, it's not black and white. You know, it, there's, there's these gray areas. You know, it, there's a lot of there's a lot of lies being pushed, and and we must remember that. Um, the people that are pushing these narratives have no knowledge. They don't have any understanding, if you will, of a biblical worldview. So, so they're, just, they're just out there uh, doing and saying all the things that they want to do and say uh, just because of um, the most popular person, entertainer, et cetera, et cetera. So when we think about um, biblical womanhood, I hope that the... the the message today is complementary to what we talked about last uh, week from Psalm 128 about biblical manhood because the way God designed um, the family is, is to have a man and to have a woman. They marry. They have kids. The marriage and the family lasts, you know, um, all of those uh, lives, and, and God, God blesses it. And we've been discussing in this series about um, God's design for the family. And... Uh, today, uh, I believe, is going to, again, compliment last week because um, of how God designed the family to be. And, and you know, I've shared my testimony that I'm a, I'm a, a product of a divorced family and, and a lot of that. I won't go back into that. But, and a lot of you, too, have experienced divorce. And, and, and that doesn't mean that you cannot live within God's design. What that does mean is you can start where you're at and begin to live as best that you can in God's design. Because there's grace for the things that have happened, and, and there's forgiveness. And where forgiveness is, uh, God's not going to hold your past against you. God has, God has forgiven that. God has, no longer holds that against you. So start where you're at and serve the Lord from the very best uh, place that you can uh, and do your very best to live within his will and his design for your life. So for the men, last week we gave some, um, some insight into how that's possible, and for the women, I think today we'll do the same. Um, so looking at uh, Proverbs 31, the beginning of verse 10, we're going to read through the remainder of the chapter. So follow along, uh, Proverbs 31, verse 10, uh, who then, or who can find a virtuous wife? For her worth is far above rubies. The heart of her husband safely trusts her, so he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and willingly works with her hands. She is like the merchant ship. She brings her food from afar. She also rises while it is yet night and provides food for her household and a portion for her maidservants. She considers a field and buys it. From her profits, she plants a vineyard. 
She girds herself with strength and strengthens her arms. She perceives that her merchandise is good and her lamp does not go out by night. She stretches out her hands to the distaff and her hands hold the spindle. She extends her hand to the poor. Yes, she reaches out her hands to the needy. She's not afraid of snow for her household, for all of her household is clothed with scarlet. She makes tapestry for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies sashes for the merchants. Strength and honor are her clothing. She she shall rejoice in time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and on her tongue is the law of kindness. She watches, the way, she watches over the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many daughters have done well, but you excel them all. Charm is beauty, and uh, deceitful in beauty is in passing, but a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. This is God's word. Let's pray. Father, we're thankful for this opportunity to be in this place once again to, to, to read this word, to meditate upon it, to study from it. I pray, God, that as we do that, uh, we would allow the Holy Spirit to guide our thoughts. God, um, protect our minds. And, Father, um, remind us, teach us, instruct us from your word and from what it says. And, God, may we bring ourselves under the authority of your word, the Spirit, and uh, may those two things uh, bring us into your will and purposes. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. So we're going to talk about three main things from this particular proverb about biblical womanhood. The first thing is that uh, biblical womanhood is living with righteous character in a perverted culture. I hope that you understand that we live in this, this hugely perverted culture in our, in our, in our world. Um, if you spend any time in the public, if you spend any time watching uh, anything, whether it be social media, whether it be TV, movies, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, what they call entertainment, you understand that we are living in a highly perverted culture. Uh, one of those perversions is the fact that women have become basically um, an object of entertainment and self-gratification uh, in so many ways. And, and understand, ladies, young ladies, women, um, that is, uh, again, perverted, that is distorted, that is sinful, that is everything that Satan wants you to think uh, or doesn't want you to think it is, right? And we, so, so I'm, I'm, I'm leaning in on this because... You can still be a godly woman. You can still be a young lady that, that, is, that is building your life into being a godly woman in a culture that is totally, is totally like out there, totally perverted, uh, totally distorted, messed up, right? Because here's, here's one thing that we see in our text, and one thing that you must always understand is that women must know, young ladies must know that your identity is defined by God, there's no other definition out there that is acceptable. There's no other definition out there that should be relevant to you. Your identity is defined by God. We've, we started out in Genesis chapter 1 and 2, and, and that introduced us to, to a woman's origin, where, where a woman came from. And, and as from that origin, her, her identity is discovered. We moved into Genesis chapter 3, and it reveals how Satan attacked that design. Satan attacked woman's identity and, and introduced the temptation for her to be unsatisfied with how God made her unsatisfied with what with how God designed her to live and to and to be and 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 once sin caused that curse upon all of creation both man and woman began this downward spiral uh, from sin into a distorted uh, uh, worldview if you will of what a man is what a woman is what marriage is what genders are etc 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 so all of that is has just been going downhill ever since right and and so he, what he did is distorted their identity, and, and through those attempts, they, what, what Eve tried to do is find um, satisfaction, find joy, find um, purpose outside of what God designed her to be. And that's exactly what Satan wanted her to do. Satan wanted her to, to not be satisfied in God, not be satisfied in who God made her to be, not be satisfied in what God made her to be. So Satan brought that temptation, and she was deceived, the Bible tells us, and that's exactly where it began. So, and each culture since then, each, each generation after that, has com- continued to distort God's design about what a woman is, about what a man is, about what a family is, about what a marriage is, etc., etc., 
etc. And the, the longer our world goes on, the more perverted society could get, society gets. And, and I'm, I'm convinced, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a bold statement here because I'm, I'm, um, I'm not always right about everything, but I know I'm right about this thing. And that is that there are people in this room who have a distorted idea of what being a woman is. There are people in this room that have a distorted idea about what being a man is. There are people in this room that are, have a distorted idea of what marriage is, about what a relationship is, about so many things because you have believed a narrative that Satan has been promoting for years and years and years in our society, in our culture, on social media. It's, I mean, it's everywhere, right? You, you cannot come in, you cannot um, totally guard yourself from the narrative that Satan has been, has been playing out um, in front of us, right? So, so there's no doubt that people here are, there are people here who have a distorted view of all of those things. And the reason that you have chosen to believe a lie and, and chosen to believe that perversion is because, very simply, you're not a student of the Word. Very simply, very simply, you put more stock in what you see on this screen than what you read in this book. I mean, that's just the way it is. If you don't like that, that, take it up between you and God. That's just the way it is. Because what we have in the Word of God is the very definition of what a man is, of what a woman is, of what marriage is, of what a male is and a female is, of everything right here in the Word of God. So, so turn off your, your phone and read your Bible. All right? So I just want to get that out there. That was free. You don't have to pay me for that one. All right? So... So you, 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 you choose to believe the lies of a perverted culture and, and not be a student of God's word and learn from your designer, right? So, so women must know with certainty that, that only God defines your identity. Only God reveals your purpose. Only God holds the authority over your individuality. And, and so I want you to notice in our text, because I'm, I'm pretty sure a lot of you have overlooked this. Maybe you don't even know this. But I want you to know it right off the bat, okay? Verse 10. Notice the first thing that is revealed about biblical womanhood in our text. And you might see this as a rhetorical question. Like who can find a virtuous or a noble or excellent uh, wife? You, you may read that as, a, as just a rhetorical question. One that, that has um, you know, maybe not a lot of meaning. But I want you to understand the, the Hebrew word that you read as virtuous or excellent or noble or whatever your translation means. That word is used a lot in Hebrew language, and a majority of the time, and even in this particular case, it is intended to mean, y'all hold your, y'all hold your breath, or no, maybe don't do that, you'll pass out. It's intended to mean strong. It's intended to mean competent. It's intended to mean courageous. It's intended to mean confident, brave. You see, that word is, is used in, in military language so many times in the Old Testament, it's not even, it's, I can't even count it, like all the time. And many times it's talking about the strength of an army. And so what you find in that word is so, that so um, um, I think so important is that this, and, and remember who was writing this, right? Um, King Lemuel's mother is telling them, look, this is the kind of woman that you should try to find as a wife. This is the kind of woman that you want to look for as a wife. And the very first thing that is talked about is how strong and, and competent and courageous and brave she must be, right? And, and maybe, maybe that's just a, a little bit different than what you've always thought, but I want you, I want you to understand that a, a woman that knows who she is, a woman that knows why she exists, a woman that knows who God has made her to be and why God has put her on this earth, a woman who is confident in, in who she is as, as defined by God and, and regulated by His Word, a woman who, who is that confident, that bold, that brave, that strong, is, is not to be someone that, that is intimidating to their husband, not someone who is supposed to be intimidating to, their, you know, to, to other men, but is someone that, that, that understands that I can be a benefit to the kingdom when I work side by side with my husband and do that in a manner that's under the umbrella of the authority of God's word. Understand that, that if you have a man that's operating in biblical manhood and a woman that's operating in biblical womanhood, they are a, a tremendous force for the kingdom in this world when you live under the biblical structure of God's design. 
You see, when a woman finds her identity in God, she's going to realize that, that uh, everything the world says that she should be is far less than who God designed her to be. I want you to really, really lean into that. Because there's a lot of lies going on out there. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of lies trying to convince young ladies to, 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 to push back from the biblical authority, push back from what the Bible says because of the mistakes that we see of how men treat women within the Scripture. Understand this. Just because there were certain things that were done and the Bible reveals those things doesn't mean they were right. Because what the Bible is telling you and the Bible is showing you is that, look, man's always been screwed up. If you think everything King David did was right because God describes him as a man after God's own heart, that don't mean it's true. Just because David committed adultery, that don't make it right. Just because David um, had somebody murdered, that don't make it right. Etc., etc., etc. So David's life is put out there on display for us to see the good, the bad, and the ugly, and to pattern our life after the good and not do the ugly. <laughs> right? So, so we need to understand that when it comes to biblical womanhood, ladies, when it comes to biblical manhood, men, young men, young ladies, etc., 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 stop believing the lies of the world and start believing what God has said, has written, has recorded for your benefit and for mine. All right? So women must. Know their identity is found in God. Women must be influenced, must not be influenced by a perverted culture. And I and I emphasized this earlier, but I want you to understand that that um, that, that there's so much perversion out there that that what happens is well, if I accept just a little bit of this, and and the next generation accepts a little bit more, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Before long, there women are not going to look anything like what the Bible described them to be, or or, or men alike, right? But but understand that. There's, there's this enormous amount of women, and I'll go ahead and, I'll go ahead and go here. There's an enormous amount of, of women, too, that have allowed the world, the culture, um, popular people to define what beauty is. See, beauty is not defined by this culture. Beauty is not defined by another culture. Beauty is not found in what you wear outwardly. Beauty is not, a found, not found in all that stuff you put on your face, all that stuff you do with your hair, right? Um, beauty is found inside of you, your inward character that comes through you, your words and your actions. Beauty is not defined by a company, a designer, a social media influencer, um, a clothing label, anybody, right? Because all of those are, are perversions. All of those are distortions of, of the truth. It's, un, it's interesting to me that when you, and I don't know if you caught this or not, when we read through the text, not once is outward beauty mentioned. Not once is outward beauty alluded to. None. Not once. <laughs> Why? Because then we would be tempted to think, well, then you can do this and this and this, and you can wear this and this and this, and, and, and then you'll be beautiful. Not so much. I've seen some really ugly women really ugly men, and it wasn't because of how they looked outwardly, it's because of what came out of their mouth. It was because of what and how they treated people. It, it was because of their disrespect of the Lord, right? So nowhere in our text does it, des, does it describe or address outward beauty, but it describes and, and addresses inward character, righteous actions right so so ladies women young ladies don't believe what you're being told on cv on social media you know on on, on streaming platforms on big stages you know uh, movie screens etc cetera, etc cetera. only god has the authority to define who you are only god has the authority to define how you are to live only god has the authority to define your purpose your worth and your womanhood period Secondly, biblical womanhood is not only living with righteous character in a perverted culture, but it's utilizing God-given abilities to benefit your family. And, and let me go ahead and say this, because the context of this is within the marriage, within the family, and some of you are not married yet, some of you are not, uh, you're not, you're not having your own families yet. So understand that this is just, just as applicable to you, because one of, the, one of these days you will have a family. 
One of these days you will be married. If you're an adult and you're single, it's still applicable to you because of how you interact in society, the purposes you have before God. So, so it's not, nobody in here can say, well, this message is not for me today. Well, yes, it is. <laughs> Men, it's even for you because you are to be leading, if you're married, leading your wife to God so she can find her identity, so she can find her purpose, so she can find her individuality, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, men, you're not, you're not off the hook either. So utilizing God-given abilities to, to benefit your family, and, and I hope you understand this, but women have important roles in the home and in society. Um, whether you're single, you're married, you have children or don't have children, women have extreme value. Amen. All you men should have said, amen. All you women should have said, but anyway. But, but here's the thing. You, you, you don't have to be married. You don't have to have kids to live out biblical womanhood because I don't want that uh, coming through your head either because I know, I know ladies who have who've never been married, who have never had kids, that are serving the Lord, that, um, that are making a bene- they're, they're beneficial to their church family, they're de- beneficial to society. They're living out their purpose in God. So it's not, it's, not, it's not living within some role as much as it is living out your calling before God. All right? So, so in our text, we read about a woman, and I'm not going to go back and read all this because there's a lot there and, and we don't have time. But in our text, we read the description of a woman who is faithful, a woman who is compassionate, a woman who is intelligent, a woman who is hardworking, a woman who is resourceful, a woman who is efficient, a woman who is industrious, a woman who is a planner, a woman who is an investor, and a woman who lives with integrity. So biblical womanhood isn't about just staying home and, and birthing children, cleaning the house, cooking food, you know, while the husband is so lazy, he sits in the recliner and don't do anything. That's not what woman, biblical womanhood is, right? Um, biblical womanhood is not about any of that. And, and that, ide- that ideology is, is just one of the distortions of our sinful society. So you may ask, well, does biblical womanhood in, include caring for the home and, and caring for the children and, and, and um, providing meals, etc.? Yes, absolutely it does. But let me tell you something, guys. You're not off the hook. The Bible never gives men the command, permission, or the excuse to not help your wife. Never does. <laughs> So it never excuses us men from helping in those tasks, right? So, so those who are not married and, and may never get married, you still have biblical responsibilities within your home. And you're still a great benefit to the church, to the society around you. So don't think that this leaves you out, right? And, and I believe also that, that it should be obvious from our text that, that God is not opposed to women in business. He's not opposed to women working outside the home. He's not opposed to women uh, providing supplemental income. He's not opposed to, to any of that. And, and you say, well, how does that work out? How does that mesh with last week? Because last week we were reminded that it is a responsibility of men to be the primary income for the family. It never says men are to be the only income. Men are to be responsible, right? They're to be to lead their family, to provide for their family. There's nothing wrong with a wife also working outside the home because we see that right here before us in our text. She works in the home and she works outside of the home. It's no excuse for, for either a man or the woman to be lazy. It's no excuse for either the man or the woman to shirk their God-ordained I, I, uh, uh, instructions and, and, and callings and responsibilities. We, laziness is a sin, right? It's not an excuse to live from, from, a, from a selfish mindset because women are valuable. Women are important. Women are, um, should be highly cherished by men, by everyone, but women have gifts and and skills given to them by God that benefit their home, benefit their family, benefit their church, benefit society around them. So men, to limit those or prohibit the use of those or to minimize the importance of those is sinful and it's detrimental to their calling and purpose 
that God has given them in their life. So, men, we should be supportive of women using their God-given abilities and talents. Encourage them to live to the fullest of their potential, and we see what God does for the men uh, who do that also in Proverbs chapter 31. We can see that in several verses, verse 11, 12, 23, 31. I won't go back and read those, but it's very obvious. So, so another thing about women and I'm thankful for this because I've, I've been blessed by this so many times. Another thing about women is that they, are, uh, they have insight and compassion that men often fail to possess. Um, m- most men, if you'll be honest, you're not very compassionate. You're not very uh, insightful on, on some of life's, life's decisions and, and not very empathetic sometimes. And, and women are. That's how God built them. That's how God created them, designed them. And so within our text, I hope that you caught this, but uh, it indicates how biblical womanhood includes discernment. It includes uh, education. It includes supervision, supervising other people. It includes instructing other people. It includes wisdom. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something that some of you men ain't going to like, but that's okay. Did y'all know that, that in some ways men are inferior to women? You say, whoa, 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 I'm, I'm a man. Well, get, off, get over yourself. Um, because I, I've already mentioned it, but you're probably not as compassionate as she is. <laughs> you're, probably, you're probably not as empathetic as she is. You're probably not as kind as she is. Um, you're probably not as patient as she is. And, and that's, how, that's how God made us, guys. That's how God, God intends for, for us to balance each other out. We have strengths that they, don't, that they don't have. They have strengths that we don't have, and we balance each other out. We, we see that, right? Because a woman, a godly woman, a woman who is living out uh, how God designed her to be, she's going to be a woman who, who has a home that's full of joy, a woman who has a home full of love, a woman who has a home full of generosity, a, a woman that has a home full of grace. Because men, you're going to screw up, and she's going to love you anyway. You already have. If you're married, you know this. You know this. Women, by God's design, have strengths that men don't have. Men, by God's design, same thing, have strengths that women don't have. But our text also reveals about biblical womanhood that, that, that talks about this, um, this other blessing because a woman who lives within um, the biblical design and structure of who she is and what she's called to be, guess what she's going to do for you, men? She's going to increase the value of your reputation she's going to increase the value of your influence we see that here also in our text right Uh, her husband is known in the gates sitting among the elders i mean people are talking about dude your wife is awesome (laughs) i mean you married up (laughs) you know all 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 those compliments right because because when a woman is living within the design that God has, has given her and instructed her in, she's going to be of great value not only to her family and her home and society, but, but also her husband's reputation and influence. And, and other, understand this, we can, we can try not to go revert back to last week. Um, we, can, we can think a lot about ourselves like how good we're doing in, in life, how good we're doing in business, how good we're doing in ministry, how good we're doing here and there. But let me tell you something. If you don't have a woman that's backing you 100%, that's in your corner, you ain't doing too hot. You need, you need your woman to be 100% sold out on, on you, on, on your family, on and what you're doing in life. Right, so that she compliments the marriage in such a way that you both are putting Jesus on display. Biblical womanhood consists of a woman who always puts Jesus on display. So those who are not married, you have the opportunity also, you have the responsibility also to put Jesus on display in your life, in your home, wherever you work, et cetera, et cetera. You have God-given abilities and talents that, that he intends for you to use as well, so don't shirk that responsibility so biblical womanhood is living with righteous character in a perverted culture biblical womanhood is utilizing god-given abilities to benefit your family thirdly and lastly biblical womanhood is fearing god and being fruitful in your purpose look at the end of the proverb verse 30 
Charm is deceitful, beauty is passing, but a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. Remember, the first thing we started out with a biblical manhood was fearing God. And that doesn't mean that even though in this text it's last, that it's not supposed to be first, right? It just means that everything that we've already read, everything that this woman does, everything that, that women should do should be founded upon and, and motivated by a, a, a fear of God, a healthy fear of God. Because, because if you don't have a healthy fear of God, then guess what you're not going to do? You're not going to look into God's word where the authority is to build your life around. You're going to look to society. You're going to look to, to everything out in this world rather than look to the authority. And so, so women who fear God find security and blessing. I hope, women, that you are secure in, uh, number one, your relationship with the Lord. Because if you're not secure in your relationship with the Lord, then you're not going to be secure in anything else. But if you are secure in your relationship with the Lord, I hope you are um, constantly pursuing a walk with Jesus and finding your value, your purpose, your worth, your identity in Him. And I hope that you get to a point, if you're not already there, of being secure in who you are in Jesus. I hope His voice is louder than any other voice in your ears. Because the most important aspect of biblical womanhood is the fear of God. Um, and again, although it's mentioned near the end of our text, it's the foundation upon which everything else is built. That's, that's where the character is built upon that foundation. That's where the life of fruitfulness is built upon that foundation. That's where the marriage is built upon that foundation. That's where everything is built upon that foundation. So there is no woman alive, has been, is now, will be, that can live out biblical womanhood without first submitting to the authority of God, Period. Period. There is no woman in this world who can live a life that, that we, we find described throughout the Word of God, one that's full of joy and love and blessing, etc., etc., that doesn't first start with a relationship with the Lord. It's got to start there, right? It's got to start there. There is an absolute and non-negotiable authority over the definition of womanhood. And for you to be a recipient of God's blessings, you have to live within his design. That's just the way it is. You have to be obedient to his word. That's just the way it is. The biblical structure, again, another thing I don't find, um, well, I won't go there right now. Um, I'll do that next week when we talk about parenting. But one thing about biblical womanhood is, is you, don't have a, you don't find a woman who is, who is living in that structure who is argumentative about that structure, right? Because the biblical structure of the family is not a point of argument among women who fear the Lord. It's not an argument or, or a debate among women who fear the Lord. Rather, it's a delight in his design. And those who argue over it or debate over it uh, and debating and arguing over God's design, they have been more influenced by our culture than they have been by the Word of God. Right? So, ladies, I think I said this to men, but ladies, you need to be more influenced by the Word of God, the Spirit of God, the person of God, than you are anything else, anyone else. Right? Because we read in this text, the woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gate. God's going to bless her life. God's going God to give her security in her life and stability in her life and favor in her life. Because here's, here, and here's something that's applicable for everybody, so lean in. Any place in your life that operates within God's design, that operates within God's purpose, is also going to be a place where God's presence is experienced. So men, if you're operating in the design of God and your purpose, then God's going to bless your manhood. God's going to bless your family. God's going to bless your business endeavors. God's going to bless everything that you do because you're living within that design. Ladies, women, if you're doing the same, God's going to, God's going to bless that. God's, God's presence is going to be there. The home is going to be a place of God's presence and love and blessing and favor. Ladies, uh, if, you're, if you're in business, God's going to bless that. God's going to dwell there. God's going to God's going to use that. Kids, God's going to, if children are living in the design of, of children and, and parents are parenting within that design, we'll talk about that next week, 
um, then guess what? God's presence is going to be there. God's blessing is going to be there. The fruit is going to be born there. So women, fear God. Find your security. Find your um, blessing in who God has made you to be. And lastly, women who live out their purpose bear fruit for the kingdom. I can't leave this out. I didn't leave it out last week. No, not going to leave it out here because it's so very important. Um, in, in, in the subject of biblical womanhood and kingdom matters, they go, they, they go hand in hand, right? God's original design was for a family to function together for the glory of God and for the purpose of his kingdom. That was his original design. He didn't change his mind, right? Um, if you're married, your marriage is supposed to be a husband and a wife living within, living within that structure, living within that, that design and operating for the, for the glory of Jesus in the kingdom of God. Satan continues to attack that. Satan continues to, 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 get, to try to destroy that. So men, you must protect what God has given you rule over. I'm going I'm to lean back in on that because, ladies, it's not your job to protect the family. Ladies, it's not your job to protect the home. It's your husband's. It's the man's. So, man, if you ain't doing that, man up. Do what you're supposed to do. If you're, if you're a single parent home, I'm sorry that you have to deal with that. So just do what you got to do until you got to do something else, right? Satan knows that there are people in our culture, there are more people in our culture, more women in our culture than men who, who are sold out for Jesus. I hope that changes. I hope, I hope that, that goes the other way. So that's why Satan continues to attack, to pervert, to distort, to, 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 to continue to push this narrative uh, upon women so he can continue to destroy that because he knows that, it, that most of the time it's the women who bring their kids to church while the man's too lazy to, to, to lead and he's out doing this, that, or the other when, when he's, a, he's, he's not supposed to be, right? So Satan is going to attack the women because the men's already, they're already defeated. So he's going to attack the women and try to destroy everything. So men, you got to man up. Women, you got to live within your design. And guess what? When both fear God, When you have a man who fears God, a woman who fears God, leading a family who fears God, guess what's going to happen? You're going to find security. You're going to find blessing. You're going to find favor. You're going to find so many things in that that you wouldn't find elsewhere. Jim, throw up our takeaway, please. The Bible is the divine source given to define womanhood. And contains instructions on how to live within that design. Submission and obedience to God and his word will bring blessings upon a woman's life and purpose. The first thing you need to know, and I've already alluded to it, is that if you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, you can't do any of this. You don't have the power, the ability within you. So you must be saved. And it doesn't matter if you're a woman, man, boy, or girl. The most important thing that you can do in your life is to be saved. To be born again by God's Spirit. To, to understand that you are a sinner by birth. To understand that your sin separates you from God. And, and to, to fix that, Jesus came. And he lived a, a sinless life, a perfect life. Jesus came and he died a death on your behalf. He was punished for you. He was, he was broken for you. He was, he was tortured for you so that you can look to him. You can say, Jesus, I believe that you died for me. Jesus, I believe that you rose again for me. Jesus, I believe that you can save me. So if you have never been saved, you've never been born again, that's what you need to do first. Would you bow your heads with me, please? Father God, I'm so very thankful for this opportunity to open your word with these people. And I trust that your word will go forth and produce the fruit that you intend it to produce. So this morning I'm thankful for that promise. And this morning I'm leaning into that promise, trusting that your spirit and your word are working together to convict us, to draw us, to show us individually your will for our lives. And I pray that that each one of us will have the courage 
to be surrendered to that will, to kick the devil out of our life, our head, and say, no, I'm not listening to you anymore. I'm going to listen to the Spirit of God. I'm going to listen to the Word of God. I'm going to surrender to those and live how you have designed me to live. So, God, I pray that your will be done. In Jesus' name.